With Allah's name, merciful benefactor, merciful redeemer, our praise and thanks belongs to Allah, the Lord and cherisher, guardian and vav of all worlds. We pray for Allah's peace to be and his blessings to be upon our prophet and his mercy. And may Allah's peace be upon all of us and all the righteous. There is no God, nothing deserving worship except Allah and Allah alone. To him belongs the sovereignty, to him belongs the praise, and he has power over all things. We seek Allah's aid, we seek his forgiveness, and I bear witness that nothing deserves worship except Allah and Allah alone. And I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad is his messenger and his slave servant. Assalamu alaikum. We welcome you to our pre Juma conversation. Uh, and we welcome you to the, the end of this year of uh, quarantine Jumas. Yes, it's been an entire year that we have not been here in the masjid, although I'm here today and hoping to bring you spiritually into this beautiful facility. Um, it's been a year that we've been having these pre-Juma conversations and, and afterwards we have uh, salat together. We have missed our hugs and our handshakes. We've missed your smiling faces and, and we've actually missed a few faces that uh, found it difficult to smile, but we still miss them. Uh, this has been a trying year for everyone, uh, but you would think most trying for us as Muslims because community life and collective life is paramount and essential in Al Islam. Yet my conversation today will suggest that we as Muslims have done better than most because of our traditional rites and rituals have prepared us to endure and even flourish in a pandemic. One of my interfaith friends always says, tradition is the living faith of the dead, while traditionalism is the dead faith of the living. And so we're sort of on that track today, that tradition is the living faith of those who have gone ahead, whereas traditionalism is the dead faith of those who are living. We've been in a pandemic and we're still in it, so we are still not here in person. And a pandemic pertains to all people, everybody on the earth. And even the least religious or the least spiritual of persons should in some way form or fashion or think about if it's a pandemic affecting all the people on earth, perhaps Allah is involved. So we read Quran, we read Bible and Torah. How do we read and talk about Noah and the flood, Sodom and Gomorrah with Lot, the Thamud with Sali, the Ad with Hud, uh, the Madian with uh, Shuaib, Moses and, and uh, Pharaoh. And then there's Jonah and the people of Nineveh who, who actually repented. How, how do we read this, these, these narratives and these stories and not think about the day and time that we're in and we've been in for this whole year? Allah says in crying, there are some, these are some of the stories of communities which relate to you. Uh, it say, Allah said, these are some of the stories of communities which we relate to you. Of them, some are standing and some have been mowed down. It was not we who wronged them, they wronged their own souls. 
and the deities other than Allah that they invoked profited them nothing when they issued the decree of their Lord. In each of these scenarios plagued a particular people. Although the lesson and the message is for all of us, but how can we not bring a lot of mind and keep a law on our minds and hearts and souls in the midst of a pandemic that affects all people? To some degree, I've been pleasantly surprised at how Muslims, for the most part, have responded to the pandemic. Who would have thought one year ago, the beginning of March, a year ago, who would have thought that some circumstance would occur where Ramadan would be severely limited. And Hajj, for the most part, was curtailed. If I had told you that a year ago that there was not going to be Ramadan as we know it, and that it was not going to be Hajj, you say, oh, Imam Pleman is off his rocker. But a year later, we are still in a similar situation. Ramadan will not be like it normally is this year. And, and Hajj most likely will also have some severe limitations. Who would have predicted and who would have believed that prediction? So let me go where I'm going with this today, which is in my mind addresses why Muslim leadership for the most part responded properly and timely to the pandemic. I, I hope that you do realize that both uh, Juma and Ramadan, especially Juma, like we have Juma with a thousand people in this space, and Ramadan that we have, uh, certainly both of those uh, would have been super spreaders, and Hodge would have been extraordinarily a super spreader if they had gone on as usual last year. So Allah knows best, but thankfully, Islamic leadership knew well, knew well. I say I was pleasantly surprised because our rights of Ramadan and Hajj are so important to us all as Muslims and so important to Islamic leadership. And in fact, there would be no king and prince of Saudi Arabia if it wasn't for the Hajj and them being custodians of the sacred place and doing so well as custodians in the sacred place. But still, who would have thought that they would have canceled the Hajj, or limited to about 5,000 people or so? Who would have thought that uh, uh, MBS, Mohammed bin Sal uh, Salman, who is the up and coming crown prince, or his father, the king, who would have thought that they would have had enough foresight to say, we can't have Hajj in, in 2020? Because you know they they uh, have uh, designed a war on Yemen that is oppressing the people to such a degree that we have an epidemic of cholera in Yemen because of the starvation and the war and the circumstances that uh, America has supported the Saudis in in uh, uh, programming that war in Yemen. And, and now there's this epidemic of cholera, and uh, we haven't gotten any kind of humane response from Saudi as it relates to that. So who would have expected that they would uh, see the light in terms of uh, uh, counseling basically Hodge? So my subject is rights of righteousness. It somewhat explains to me at least why Muslim leadership for the most part made the right uh, decisions about how to respond to the threat of COVID-19 pandemic. We read in Quran, Allah talks about, it is not righteousness that you turn your faces towards the east or the west, but it is righteousness to believe in Allah and the last day, to believe in the angels and the book and the messengers, to spin of your substance out of the love for God, for your, for your kin, for the orphans, for the needy, for the wayfarer, for those who ask, and for the ransom of slaves. Righteousness is to be steadfast in prayer, Allah says, to practice regular charity. That means to, to institutionalize the, the prayer, to institutionalize the charity. Fulfill contracts you have made, and my main point today, all those are 
uh, our main points, but the main point today is the first part, righteousness is not turning your face to the east or west, and that we should be firm and patient in pain and adversity and throughout all periods of panic. Such are the people of the truth. Such are the mutakis, the people of truth, the God-conscious and regardful ones. Our prophet prayers and peace be upon him said, how grand is the believer? All he does becomes an act of piety. If good befalls him, he thanks Allah. And if misfortune befalls him, he bears it patiently. And Allah says in Quran, by no means will you attain righteousness unless you give of that which you love and whatever you give of truth, Allah knows it well. So as Muslims, we love Ramadan. We love Hajj. We love hugging and greeting and smiling and shaking hands and praying shoulder to shoulder with our brothers and our sisters, but we had to give that up for the past year. But we did not have to give up, and hopefully for most of us, we did not give up the lessons of those rites, the lessons of those rituals. Rites and rituals preserve, maintain, transmit, transpose, transport powerful messages, powerful principles and knowledge and inspiration. I remember Imam Waraduddin Muhammad saying right here in this space, right here in this space at a Juma during Ramadan here at the Atlanta Masjid, how he sees in the positions of Salat the rise and fall and resurrections of human civilizations. He went into how the word of God raises societies up where we're standing up in Kiam. And sometimes we, we, we begin to leave the praise of God and begin to praise our own intellect and our own insight and our own thinking more so than God who blessed us with all of that. So God bends us to remind us of the greatness of his creation and he, he is the one who created all that we uh, can see for our own consumption of our own minds and lives. And then he straightens us back up. He bends us in that ruku, and then he straightens us back up to look out again, as Allah says, turn your vision to the creation and see if you see any flaws. And then look again, so he bends us back up to take that second look to see, do I see any flaws in all of this that God has given us? And then we, we, in that position, he takes us down all the way to Sajda, to remind us that our pattern is in and out of creation no matter what height or claim we have reached. Allah the Most High, to him is due our surrender. We come in and out of creation, we come out of creation, we raise up, but we have to return back. And in the midst of, in between all of that, Allah rewards us with revelation, rewards us with inspiration, and he causes us to have this rise and fall, and then finally we fully submit and surrender in this sad position, and then he blesses us and establishes us on the throne of Jasa, sitting among the people and prescribing God's peace to those on the right who are strong and conscious and prescribing God's peace to those on the left who are weak and maybe unaware. And all of our rites and all of our rituals have similar profound meaning, application, and wisdom. We can't just stop right there. You know, one, another one of my interfaith friends uh, said he, he was, uh, he said, when faith is completely replaced by creed, when faith is completely replaced by creed, worship by discipline, Love by habit. When the crisis of today is ignored because of the splendor of the past. When faith becomes a heirloom rather than a living fountain. When religion speaks only in the name of authority rather than 
with the voice of compassion, its message becomes irrelevant, oppressive, and meaningless. So we have to see our rites and our rituals as being life-stirring and life-giving and life-encouraging. And zakat, giving for the sake of Allah who is without any need. And also giving from that which you love. Allah says righteousness is, is giving freely of that which you love. There's a verse in Quran that Allah asked a re 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 gives us insight in the, on the pilgrimage. He says, do you make the giving of drinks of pilgrims or even the maintenance of the sacred mosque equal to the service those, of those who believe in Allah in the last day and strive with might and main in the cause of Allah? They are not comparable in the sight of Allah. So there are levels to our zakat. There are levels to our sadaqah. So here's where I want to go. Our rights must lead us to greater righteousness. Our rights give structure to the Muslim life. They give order. They give continuity. They give definition and unity. But our rights have much more to give than those wonderful and necessary things, such as the order, the structure, the continuity, the definition, and the unity. You know, we always say Hajj is a dress rehearsal for the day of judgment, the day of resurrection. But if it is, and I believe it is, if it is, it certainly also has some relevance uh, uh, in this life is a dress rehearsal for something here as well. So let's think about Ramadan and Hajj, lessons that have been applicable during this pandemic. We have abstained from so much this past year. Where do we get those muscles from? If I can do without food and drink for 30 days during the day and give up hours of sleep so that I can make the Tahawiyah prayers, why can't I handle the, pande the pandemic? <laughs> Is wearing a mask too much for me? Is not eating out at restaurants too much for me? Think of all the things we complain about, but Ramadan, we have much more rigorous uh, abstention, and we, and we accept it. And look at Hajj. Even before we leave to go on Hajj, you got to get some shots. I know some of, some of us complain about we don't want to get the, the, the vaccination and everything, but you went on Hajj, and you didn't know what was in any of those things. You got a shot for hepatitis B. You got one for cholera. You might have got one for tuberculosis, uh, uh, meningococcal, uh, all these things you don't, can't even pronounce the names. Did you question them? No, because the goal was Hodge. You complain you haven't been to the barber shop or the beauty parlor. You go on Hodge, there's no makeup, there's no perfume, there's no fancy outfits, no haircuts, no manicures. We, and we, we circulate the Kaaba, yes, we circulate in crowds, but really when you're in the, on Hodge, it's just between you and Allah. Those crowds just melt away. It's be, when you're doing it right, we are along with our Lord. Allah says, to him belongs the east and the west. And so wherever you turn, there is Allah's continents. Safa and Mara are rigorous. Sometimes the rigors of the pandemic just seem like we have been just going and back and forth running here and running there and walking here and walking there, a year of routine back and forth. It is this Safa and Mawa that gives the Muslim uh, the strength to endure those rigors. And while we're in the month of March, which is Women's Month, let us remind all of us that, that Safa and Mawa is, is because of Hagar, Hagar. So Hajj is a duty that Allah has given us to bring back its lessons into our lives. It's not just about us making the Hajj. We're making the Hajj so we can bring back these lessons for our lives. And if we can truly endure and be engaged in the Hajj 
or in Ramadan, we have been prepared for judgment, hopefully, but surely prepared to meet a pandemic with no obscenities, with no wickedness, and with no wrangling. If we have endured this past year with ease, it's because we packed like we packed for Hajj. Allah said, take your provisions, pack them, but the best of provision is taqwa, God consciousness, regardfulness. That's the best provision, and if this pandemic has been easy for us, it's because we packed taqwa, and we traveled this year with taqwa. And those of us who make hajj, is also there's one other thing we should add to that, a provision that we had to pack is patience, patience. We have come to know, as we do on Arafat, we've come to know much more about who we are, who our spouse is, who our children are or who our children are not. We have been busy stoning shaitan and stoning the idols that had invaded our lives. We started with a big one. I'm not calling him a big shaitan, but he was a big idol to a lot of folk. We started with a big one and worked our way down the list, especially here in Georgia. This has been quite a year. Allah says, on Hajj, it is no crime if you seek the bounty of Allah during this Hajj. And some of us have been busy bringing income in during the pandemic. And Allah says, that's fine. And when you come off of the Mount of Arafat and knowing yourself and knowing more about your family, celebrate the praises of your Lord and ask for forgiveness. I think and hope you've got my point. Even as wondrous and amazing and fulfilling uh, all of our rites and rituals are, Allah says he gives every people rites and rituals. But these rites and rituals are preserving and maintaining and transmitting and, and transporting powerful messages, principles, knowledge, and inspiration. They give order, structure, definition, and continuity and unity to our lives, and, and they prepare us for whatever rigors that may come to us. They prepare us to have a life that is fulfilling, a life that goes beyond just uh, passing the days, passing the minutes, passing the hours. Gives us a life that is fulfilling. I've seen no better rites and rituals than ours in El Islam. I've had interfaith people ex expressly tell me that they have holy envy for what we have in our rites and our rituals, our shahada being a witness that Allah is God and God alone being a witness that Muhammad is the, uh, uh, the best of human beings and a, a, a mercy to all the worlds. They, they have envy to see us five times a day making salat. They have envy to see us uh, uh, having all kinds of descriptions of zakat, even a smile is zakat. They have envy of this Ramadan taking over our lives for 30 days each year. They have envy of bringing this whole, somebody from every community to Hajj. They have envy for that. So we have wonderful, wonderful rituals, but still know for certain that those rituals are there to carry and preserve and protect and transport a message of how to live a fulfilling life, no matter what comes at us. On a final note, over the past year, we have lost many. Many from right here at this masjid, many of our friends that we have worked and lived with. And, and though most of them was not necessarily directly associated with COVID, but still it had its influence as well. Some, sometimes just loneliness, sometimes just not being able to see, not being able to be with a full family causes a lot of distress on people. So we've, we've lost many. Here in Georgia, there have been 18,000 deaths. One million cases, 18,000 deaths. 
here in the U.S., there's been over a half million deaths, 30 million cases and over a half million deaths. In the world, almost 3 million deaths, 125 million cases, but almost 3 million deaths. So we've lost quite a lot. And Allah says, think not of those who die in the way of God as dead. No, they are living, finding their sustenance with their Lord. And the prophet prayers and peace be upon him says, whoever dies from a plague is a martyr. That's something for you to think about. I'm not going to take a position on it other than I, that if he said it, I believe it. Whoever dies from a plague is a martyr. And whoever remains in a plague-ridden land patiently and hopefully of reward, knowing that only what Allah decrees will reach him, will get the reward of the martyr. And Allah says, he, he reveals what's stern in the prophet's soul. Did you think that you would enter the garden of paradise without such trials as came to those before you? They encountered suffering and adversity and were so shaken in spirit that even the messenger and those of faith who were with him cried, when comes the help of Allah? And Allah, in his great mercy, responded to him in Quran and to us as well. Ah, surely the help of Allah is always near. God says, When comes the help of Allah in victory and you see people entering Allah's religion in crowds, celebrate the praises of Allah and pray for his forgiveness, for he is off returning to grace and mercy. O oh Allah, we ask that you guide us among those whom you've guided aright. Preserve us among those whom you have preserved. Befriend us among those whom you have befriended. Bless us in what you have granted us. Deepen our commitment. Strengthen our resolve. Purify our intention. Expand our hearts. Enlighten our minds. Increase our works. Forgive us. And we ask that you fulfill our souls. O oh Allah. Bless us with good in this world and good in the hereafter, and save us from the torment of the fire. Amen. May Allah accept our prayers. I don't know why we don't have any announcements, because we have plenty of stuff happening. So let us stay on that. This is, uh, we know the community wants to know what's going on. And, and inshallah, we will, uh, be able to announce things on next week and each week while we have people's attention. So stay with us. We'll have the dam from our weather, Jesse Ali Ahmed. We'll call the dam for Salatu Thuhur. Allahu Akbar, Allah. Assalamu alaikum. Allahu Akbar, Allah. Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu anna Muhammadan rasulullah
Allah, 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 Allah,